Infinimist is without a doubt the best Necromancer build in Season 2. Wow. And there's even an argument that it might just be the best build, period, in Season 2. This build does ridiculous damage, it wrecks bosses in single target, it farms nightmares with ease, and defensively, it's absolutely unkillable. This build is crazy. But... There's a lot of debate going on right now as to what the best version of Infinimist actually is. And recently, there's been a popularized version of the build that relies very heavily on crit in order to maximize the value of Shadow Blight and X Falls. But I've been doing a lot of testing with the damage over time version of the build and have had way more success with it. The crit build is supposedly much better at killing bosses. However, in the best clips I could find, they could kill a Nightmare 98 boss in one minute. With a full dot build, I killed a Nightmare 100 boss, so it has more health, and I killed it in 30 seconds. Half the time. And on top of that, in AoE, Black River Corpse Explosion has much better scaling. So the damage in AoE is much better, and the damage in single target is better. And today, we're going to break down exactly why that is. Almost all of the reason why the dot version is better can be traced back to Black River. Black River is a unique one-handed scythe and the rolls on it are absolutely ludicrous. This is genuinely probably the best single item in the game. So, what makes it so good? First of all, it has intelligence on it, which gives it great pairing with our Paragon board because of Wither. Wither is a damage multiplier where each point of intelligence gets exponential more value, and so having intelligence on the scythe is actually pretty decent. Next, it has plus four to all corpse skills. This is going to hit both corpse explosion and corpse tendrils. So the cooldown of corpse tendrils is actually gonna be lowered by quite a bit, and we're gonna get a nice damage multiplier in corpse explosion itself. Next, it has fueled by death, two ranks. That's just going to be a flat damage multiplier. Again, you can see how much of this is multiplicative. Next, hued flesh is an amazing passive and we're getting three ranks of it from Black River. Hued Flesh gives all of our skills a lucky hit chance to spawn corpses and against bosses, this chance is doubled. This means that we can generate a lot of corpses in AoE and a decent amount of corpses in single target. And then the unique effect is why that corpse generation is so important. Corpse Explosion will consume extra corpses to increase its damage by 128% per additional corpse. 128% per corpse. That means if you consume four additional corpses, that is 520% damage. There is nothing in the game with a number this big. This is wild. On top of this, you're also able to get three ranks of corpse skills on your necklace and four ranks of corpse skills on your pants. All of this combined is plus 11 to corpse explosion, putting the resulting rank to 16. Currently, I'm only at 15, but this is doing 36,481 damage. Now, if you compare this to X-Falls, it's about the same number. And X-Falls is not being multiplied by Black River. So you can start to see why the damage of pure dot corpse explosion is so ridiculous. So if our dot damage is so insane and it's being multiplied by such a ridiculous number on Black River, it's very important that we stay focused on just the dot damage. We don't want to run Aspect of Decay. We don't want to run X-Falls. We don't want to run anything that isn't buffing Corpse Explosion. Because as you put more and more weight into Corpse Explosion, as you get more ranks of it, as you get more multipliers, each multiplier gains more value. So trying to separate the build and trying to build up multiple different types of damage in one build is generally pretty counterproductive, and that is absolutely the case in this build. Pure Dot is going to out damage any other version. So now that we've established what kind of build we're going to be going over, let's just jump straight into the skill tree and start breaking it down. So for starters, we're going to be playing Reap with Acolyte's Reap. You could just record that. That's going to be virtually every build. Damage reduction, free corpse, stuff's insane. We're going to be running Hued Flesh. So remember, this is going to give us extra corpses, which is going to massively increase our overall damage. Hued Flesh is a vital piece of this build. We're going to be putting four points into Blood Mist, and we're going to go all the way to Ghastly Blood Mist, so that our Blood Mist also makes corpses, which is just more fuel for the corpse explosion. We're going to be playing Corpse Explosion, five points, and obviously going to Blighted Corpse Explosion. We're going to be putting three points into Field by Death for the nice little damage multiplier. Three points into Death's Embrace for a damage multiplier and a survivability multiplier. Three points into Amplify Damage for the 12% multiplier. And then we're going to be putting one point into Decrepify 
all the way to Abhorrent Decrepify. A lot of necro builds are pretty similar, so it is what it is. But the Abhorrent Decrepify is going to give us better uptime on Bone Storm. It's going to reset the cooldown on Blood Mist, and it's also going to reset the cooldown on Corpse Tendrils. Um, we're going to be putting uh, one point into Corpse Tendrils because we're actually getting plus 11 from gear. So these extra points are not useful. So we're just going to put one point into it. And we're going to be taking Blighted Corpse Tendrils because we're going to be getting our Vulnerable from other sources. So a little bit of healing. Why not? Three points into Necrotic Carapace. This is just a little bit of extra Fortify generation. Uh, three points into Reaper's Pursuit for the movement speed. Three points into Gloom for a big damage multiplier. And then three points into Terror for another big damage multiplier. We're also going to be putting one point into Crippling Darkness. This is going to help us stagger bosses. And it's also going to proc Crowd Control for the Terror multiplier. So just one point into there is enough. Three points into Stand Alone. 18% damage reduction. Nothing to complain about. Three points into Momenti Mori. So these effects are decent, and so, you know, there's not really a lot of other things to spend our skill points on, so we'll put three points into this. Bone Storm, everything, you know the deal. Big thing here is the damage reduction. The crit doesn't really matter. I could, maybe we could actually take this point out. Hmm, I didn't think about that. Anyway, it's fine the way it is. And then we're going to be putting one point into Shadow Blight. And the reason why we're taking Shadow Blight and Bone Storm is the standard Bone Storm package, right? So we're going to be running the Blighted Amulet after we proc Shadow Blight uh, 10 times. We're going to get 180% damage multiplier. We're going to run Aussie Gale. So this version of the build does so much damage, it's really hard to reset the cooldown on Bone Storm. So we're going to be running Aussie Gale to increase the duration of Bone Storm by 10 seconds. We're going to be running the Blood Soak Circle so that our Blood Mist leaves a dot around us while we move around. It removes the movement speed penalty. It's really good for proccing Lucky Hit, and it's a movement speed item. Plus... Because we have so much emphasis on dot damage, this actually does a fair amount of damage. We're going to be running the Aspects of Ultimate Shadow. Again, turning Bone Storm into a Shadow skill. And the this will help proc the different aspects. And it's going to increase the number of times the Bone Storm does damage. More barrier, yada yada. You guys know all this. Um, so, we're also going to be playing God Slayer's Crown. The reason for this is because we kind of have an extra aspect slot. And it's going to help a lot with the boss because this has about a 25% uptime on a 60% damage multiplier. So this is just going to be proccing every 12 seconds and it's going to last for 3 seconds against bosses. And against elites, it's going to help pull them in, help stack them a little bit if you don't have a corpse tendrils up or whatever. Plus, it's just going to add that 60% extra burst. Aspect of Disobedience, of course, for the massive armor. Howl from Below. So Howl from Below is a meh item. This is not an amazing item. The thing is that it has lucky hit chance, which we really want, and it has a 40% damage multiplier on it for the corpse explosion. I, this item does not feel amazing to run, but honestly, there just really isn't great choices. Like I said, we really want to just funnel everything into corpse explosion. That is our damage. And so we don't want to spend aspects less on other things, so we'll just take the 40% multiplier. On our pants, we're running the aspect of shielding storm for the crazy barrier generation. And then on our boots, we've got the Explosive Mist, which is going to reduce the cooldown on Blood Mist and cause our Blood Mist to automatically cast Corpse Explosion. And these Corpse Explosions it casts are fully leveled up, and they uh, proc the Black River, so they'll consume multiple corpses for bigger casts. For the Book of the Dead, we're going to be running Reapers for our Skeletons. This is just going to give us a 15% damage multiplier. On our Mages, we're going to run uh, Cold for a 15% damage multiplier against Vulnerable. And the Golem sucks, but we're going to be running a 10% life multiplier. Like, uh, Iron Golem is nice, you know, for the other versions of the build. But for this version, you know, the other passive sucks. So we'll just take the 10% health. Vampiric Powers. This, again, is going to look pretty similar, but Anticipation for the uptime on Bone Storm, right? This is really good. Metamorphosis, because the Metamorphosis is going to apply Curse whenever we dash through enemies. And it's also going to cause our evade to give us unstoppable which is really useful the main reason we're running it is for the application of empiric curse in this build because we have really high uptime on unstoppable with blood mist but sometimes the unstoppable is nice to have so just good in general domination is really useful it's going to give us a 25 percent damage multiplier we're constantly stunning enemies because of corpse tendrils and because we have a chance to stun on hit plus the um Decrepify gives a chance to stun on hit, so we have a lot of sources of stun, so it's a decent uptime, and then whenever the boss gets staggered, obviously, we're going to do a lot of damage. Prey on the Weak is going to give us a 16% damage multiplier against Vulnerable, and it's going to make it so whenever we evade through enemies with Metamorphosis to apply Vampiric Purse, Curse, they're also going to be Vulnerable, and this Vulnerable will have 100% uptime, so it's apply it and forget it. 
Finally, we're going to be running Flowing Veins. This is going to give us a 60% damage multiplier after we evade through enemies. Though you can see here that it's really important that we evade through enemies to apply Vampiric Curse, apply Vulnerable, and um, you know allow for Flowing Veins and all of that to proc. So the main way that this build is going to play is we're going to walk up to a pack with Bone Storm on, and if you're doing hard content, you're also going to have to go to the pack inside of Blood Mist. You're going to decrepify it as you go in as well. And then you're, as soon as your Blood Mist ends, you're going to Reap and then cast Corpse Tendrils on the Reap. And then you're going to kite around until your Blood Mist is up and then go straight back into Blood Mist. Keep up your Curses, Bone Storm on cooldown, and spam Blood Mist. The Paragon board for Season 2 has changed more than other parts of the build. In part because we actually want these Resistance nodes now, but also because of a new Glyph that ends up being really useful. So let's talk about the Paragon board. So for starters, are going to be taking Amplify. This is going to buff up the nearby magic nodes, increasing the amount of armor we get, and it's going to give us a flat 10% damage buff. We're also going to be taking the legendary node Wither. So Wither is actually um, a damage multiplier for stacking intelligence, and the more intelligence you have, the more value you get out of this. It's actually exponential, because more intelligence means more crit chance and more crit damage. So this scales really hard. That being said, the intelligence on your gear is really competitive. It's competing with a lot of important stats. So it's generally not worth stacking for Wither, but if you have some intelligence gear, it's not gonna hurt you. We're gonna be taking the Exhumation Glyph. So you can see I haven't finished leveling it yet, but this Glyph is incredibly powerful. This is the new one. The main thing here is that it's going to fortify us and give us damage reduction each time we consume a corpse. And the thing is, because of Black River, we're consuming corpses in batches of five. So the fortify generation from this is actually wild. This is an extremely good glyph. Coming up here, we're going to be taking control. So you can see that we actually have quite a few multipliers coming together against crowd control targets, and control is going to play into that very heavily. You can see in the clips where like I'm fighting the bosses and stuff, a lot of the damage happens after the boss gets staggered because of all these multipliers. We're going to be taking territorial. This is just going to give us, you know, a nice 10% damage reduction. This is really useful. And then we're going to be taking Flesh Eater. This is self-explanatory. You consume corpse, you get 40% damage. Of course, we're taking this. We're also going to be taking Sacrificial. This is going to buff up the armor notes, give us some much needed armor, and it's also going to be a flat 10% damage increase. We're also going to be taking Scent of Death. So Scent of Death is interesting. In this build, it actually varies very quickly between damage buff and damage reduction. But you generally have one of them, and it's pretty cheap to get this because of how the board is constructed, so it's worth it to pick up Scent of Death. And finally, we're going to be getting the Scourge Glyph. This is going to give us a 10% damage multiplier and a small damage additive value. That's all I've got for today. My name is Ruse, and I'll see you in the next one.